Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. We, of course, are back here, uh, back at the man cave and stuff, dealing with today is tax day. So you better have your taxes in today, or you will be paying a penalty tonight after midnight. So hopefully you've got those things done and so on. It's also the first day of Dallas Cowboys voluntary OTAs, and we do not have C.D. Lamb here, and we'll have more of that in a few moments here. But I do want to say, up oh, here comes the rain. I do want to say that the Cowboys may be actually writing one of the mistakes that they made uh, this past year uh, with Dan Quinn, or mistakes that Dan Quinn made. One of those was Mozzie Smith. Okay, you drafted Mozzie Smith to be a run stopper. Okay, understand everything that Mozzie Smith had done was to be in the middle of the field to clog it up and to shut down the run. That was his job. Dan Quinn is like, yeah, we understand you know you, you do that, but we want you to lose some of that 337 pounds. We want you to get down into the two under under 300. And we want you to be a three technique. And I believe because, see, most people look and say, well, it's just you're just a defensive lineman. You know, you just just, just all you got to do is just stand there. So it's not the same thing. It is not the same thing by any stretch of the imagination. A one technique guy is rare and definitely a different breed than what a three technique would be. They've already had him start to put his weight back on, which is great. Putting that weight back on is going to be huge, as well as um, going back to be a one technique guy. That's the first thing that they've done that is good. The second one is maybe realizing that Marquez, Marquez Bell, who is 207 pounds, is too small to be a linebacker. He is going back to being a safety, which is good. He, now let's, uh, let, let's be clear here. I'm not throwing shade on Marquez Bell because he is a great player. The fact that he was able to go from safety to linebacker says a lot of things. But see, you got to understand that you have to have a certain set of skills to play a position. And if you have a guy who's the jack of all trades, he's really not the master of none, which is okay if you're a guy like me and you need me to come to your house to fix the hot water heater or, you know, take care of putting in, you know, some new lighting circuits or plastering the walls. But when it comes to football, you need specialists, guys that are able to do one thing. And being safety and linebacker, they are two different players. Body-wise, linebackers have to be used to playing downhill and delivering a low a load and being able to tackle and knock a guy out. You got it? Where was it? There you go. Told you. Okay. Mike's been looking for some electronic piece. It's always the last place. You know, when you find something, it's always the last place you looked because you're not looking for it anymore because you found it. Why would you still be looking if you haven't? So it's always the last place. Be that as it may, it is actually beginning to pour out here, which means I would uh, was going to do some more work outside, but I guess I'm not going to. All right, so he is going back to linebacker. Of course, we got Eric Kendricks, who is a typical linebacker who's played linebacker's whole career. And I actually hope that maybe we get away from some of the position flex because a lot of times the Cowboys look at their position flex and think, We've got, you know, we, we got a guy who can play two positions, okay? So it's a twofer. We can save some money because, you know, we'll, we'll play. No, Tyrone Crawford was one of these guys too. And he was okay as a defensive end. He was okay as a defensive tackle. But he wasn't exceptional at either. And maybe we'll start looking and saying, Mozzie, you're a run stopper. You're going to be a guy that's going to be in the middle of the field, clogging it up. You know, go ahead, get some Joe Boo wings and some Joe Boo barbecue and have at it. Keep the weight on, you know, and, and just be ready to drop the anchor and clog up the middle. You've got one job, and that's the only job we want you to do. Now, Rich Eisen, shout out to Rich Eisen and crew. 
because they, of course, are talking about C.D. Lamb. Isn't it amazing how every day there's always something new about the Dallas Cowboys to trash them about? Every day. Let's go to the tape. It is tax day. All right. Yes. Yeah. Well, is that really something to celebrate? No. no. Okay. No. Very much. Uh, no. No. Tax day. <laughs> it's a worst day of the year. But unless you're an NFL fan, today's a great day. Because? It's off-season workout program. Oh, yeah. oh. So it's not mandatory to appear. Unlike your taxes. It's not man, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's mandatory. That's mandatory. Hard that's to get around that. <laughs> uh, yeah. the, uh, the question on days like this get asked of a lot of players because we haven't spoken to them in a while, and they mm -hmm. sit there in front of a microphone, and they ask quest we ask questions about narratives and things that happen in free agency, things that might happen in the draft. And then um, we get our answers. Whether they're satisfactory or not is really up to you. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the individuals who are not there. And the individuals who are not there are frequently players who want a new contract and haven't gotten it yet and have expected it and still don't have it. For instance, you know, he's not at the Minnesota Vikings off-season workout program. Today. My, my cousin? His name is Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. my cousin. He's not there. We asked him at the uh, Super Bowl, which, as you know, is early February. Here it is mid-April, April 15th, Ides of April, mm -hmm. which is uh, definitely uh, that, that, a Shakespeare workshop, that one. <laughs> and so um, back in the day. And so we asked him, where's the bag? Where's the bag? How large is the bag? We said, we have a bag. It's just, you know, yeah, just got some just... goodies in it. It's like a Roku stick is in it. Nice. He appreciated it. You know, he did. He seemed to appreciate it. But it's not nearly worth the actual retail value is what he is <laughs> looking to get from the Minnesota Vikings. They're only proper to ever give it to him. But he's still looking for it. You know, he's also looking for it. C.D. Lamb's hey, looking hey, for hey. it. Beep. So there's that. He's not he's, there today. He's getting his money. We all know this. Jerry pays the guys he wants to pay. See, he's going to get his money. I like, swear. No, I know. And we, we know he's going to get it. He's got to get it. I mean, you got to you got to give him the bag before the season. Yeah. That the all in that we're talking about. Um, that was accounted for. The when all, said in all in that we're talking about. They have to give him his bag. Yes. I mean, don't they? <laughs> And I got to ask. I, mean, I, I think <laughs> so. that's me and his man. Because exactly. they've only given out the bag or part of their mm -hmm. bag to five individuals in 2024. Yeah, no, we're oh, going to Tiffany. Go. No, I mean, seriously. <laughs> I, 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 uh, and that's part of the reason why I thought they would redo Dak is to have more space to give the bag to this guy. Because you're going to have to give the bag to Dak. You're going to have to give the bag to CD. You're going to have to give the bag to Micah. That's it. We know it. That's what happens when you draft well and you succeed with them. Yeah, and we that's just say just happens. throw them away. You got to throw them away, yeah, like and that's you what that. you know. Uh, and 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 that's what you do with cap space. Mm -hmm. If you're a winning organization, is you pay your own because not only does it reward those who have done well for you, but it shows everyone in the locker room you do well for us, and this is how we handle our business for you. Yeah. So I do believe this has got to it's got to happen. The only question is is what does it With. mean for the rest of the team? And how many others are they going to take care of in their all-in season where they're just going to go all-in with the current roster and not give any more extensions and not going to give anybody more Jones Metroplex runway because they want to see them do it this year? Is it at mm -hmm. all possible that they can pull that off with CeeDee Lamb and get him on the field this year without giving him the bag? Yes. Well, as of April 15th, the answer to that question is no. He's not showing up. And we will see how that plays out. We will see how the Dallas Cowboys draft in 10 days, because that's a pretty damn big draft for them, because that's the only way they're supplementing this roster. Unless you include the NFL.com free oh, agency tracker. Yeah, this is my favorite. There we go, Mike. Here, All right. Now I need the oh, tiffany. See, there see, it is. It still is just it. five. There you go. Eric Kendrick's new to the program. Everyone else has been re-signed from a long snapper to currently only running back. Rico Dowdle, along with, I'm sorry, Deuce Vaughn is there as well. There is less five. Trent C. <laughs> and the grand total is five. No if you look at the tote board, oh, Jones, the yeah. Jerry tote board. There so you have it. there's that. <laughs> In the Metroplex. <laughs> he will never walk. Uh, Japan, Do you, Geppetto Jones is just playing you guys like like a, like a puppet. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. By the Geppetto way, Jones. for your sake, 
I hope so. That'd be great. Yes. Hope and so. for yeah. all our sakes that want to see the Dallas Cowboys oh, there ain't a lot of front and center. No, we all want to see yes. a front and center, brother. Don't worry, see them I'm not part of that team. Fails, I don't. Say. I would love. I would love to I, have. Are you seriously? You know, uh, honestly. Yeah. In terms of somebody who talks about it every Sunday on NFL Game mm-hmm. Day morning and every day here, it would be nice to have Dallas make an NFC Championship game. It would oh, switch it yeah. up oh, yeah, as opposed to the usual like, like oh here they go again and how about them Cowboys ha 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 like it would be great to just switch it up. And plus it would unlock a version of me that you've never seen. I would love oh. to and see I'm it. I'm telling you that guy's fun. I would Let's love to go. see it. That Speaking on fun. behalf of all <laughs> Michigan Wolverine fans, it was great to switch it up. Yeah. Yeah, I was on your side, remember? No, Three. you weren't. Stop. It's marvelous. Really? Nope. Who was the one that told you to start saying it with your chest? You did. Thank you. I was on your side. And by the way, and I, I don't like the Buckeyes. In that regard, um, to Ty Law, Steve Hutchinson, and the rest of the University of Michigan Wolverines, Charles Woodson, who are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I'm going to need your help at the jacket dinner this August because <laughs> I'm going to need security and a, yeah, and a yeah. solid exit strategy after I take the microphone in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> All righty. At any rate, catch the rich eye. Peace out on that one. So that's what we have, good people. I'm out. They run. They Hopefully the shit works. I see the glow shining in their eyes. It seems distant. Strange. <laughs>